salivary glands this is our second discussion concerned with salivary glands when you see this salivary glands the major glands are secretion the major salivary glands are paired structures and include the parotid submandibular and sublingual glands the parotids are serous glands sublingual are mucous glands and submandibular are mucous and serous that means these are the mixed glands when we see what are their functions of salivary functions mastication and deglutition salivary lysosome iga and other antibacterial substances protect against caries and oral cavity infections saliva also aids in speech these are the basic functions of salivary secretions when is it anatomy of parotid gland nearly 80% of the parotid glands is found below the level of external auditory canal between the mandible and scm that is sternocleidomastoid the superficial to the posterior aspect of the masseter extensions of the parotid gland project to mastoid process down the anterior aspect of the sternocleidomastoid for a short distance around the posterior border of the mandible and superiorly to the inferior margin of the zygomatic arch this submandibular gland these are located in the submandibular triangle of the neck inferior and lateral to the mylohyoid muscle the posterior superior portion of the gland curves up around the posterior border of the mylohyoid and gives rise to the wharton's duct when is the anatomy of submandibular lymphatics submandibular gland drains into submandibular nodes when is the submandibular duct the wharton's duct passes forward along the superior surface of the mylohyoid adjacent to the lingual nerve the nerve winds around the duct the first being lateral then inferior and finally medial this submandibular ducts are 2 to 4 mm in diameter and about 5 cm in length it opens into the floor of the mouth through a punctum the punctum is a constricted portion of the duct to limit retrograde flow of bacteria laden oral fluids when you see this sub sublingual glands this lies on the superior surface of the mylohyoid muscle and are separated from the oral cavity by a thin layer of mucosa the ducts of the sublingual glands are called Bartholin's duct. In most cases, Bartholin's ducts consist of eight to twenty smaller ducts of Rivinus. These ducts are short and small in diameter. The ducts of Rivinus either open individually into the FOM near the punctum of Wharton's duct on a crest of sublingual mucosa called the plica sublingualis. open directly into wharton's duct now when you see its physiology in detail the physiological contour of submandibular gland is entirely by the autonomic nervous system parasympathetic effects predominate here if parasympathetic innervation is interrupted the glandular atrophy occurs the normal saliva is contains 99.5 high percent water a normal daily production is about 1 to 2 liters of the salivary secretions when you see the obstruction or obstructive salivary disorders we will see detail in next presentation